I was inducted in the Order of the Era in 1958 in Teoc Lodge in sure. Wiggins, Mississippi. I'm actually from Laurel, but Wiggins is about 50 miles away. I received my Eagle in 1960, and this is my 65th year in scouting. I took a few years off for college, but uh, pretty much 65. Uh, after Alabama, I moved to Alabama, and, and my kids got in scouts. I joined Achinachi Lodge in 1985, and that's where I received my vigil in 1994. If I remember correctly, when I was in Teot Lodge, we didn't have very many vigils a year, and uh, you either had to be an officer or a section officer or something to, to, to be uh, honored with vigil. Starting in 1999, Achinachi, Cherokee, and Kaskanapu merged to become Kusa Lodge. I collect Kusi Lodge, pharmacy patches, and some TI patches. So that's basically what I do now. And I have a trivia that uh, I left off. I did this presentation for our lodge, but I left this trivia off, uh, printed off anyway. I think I told them about it. But in the 23 years Kusa Lodge has been, uh, been in existence, there's only been one metal flap given to a member. And that was Moran Coburn, a longtime OA member, and where and the Comer, he worked in the Comer Trading Post uh, at summer camp for years and years. And the the nice the the thing about Mister Coburn, I met him at my first uh, camp when I went to uh, Comer in 1984 and walked up and wanted to buy something in the Trading Post. And when I started to talk to him, I realized he was dead and didn't speak. But I guarantee you, after I got to know him, you would never know this man had any kind of disability. He was very smart. He was a coach at the school for the deaf and blind in Alabama and a teacher. And he has mentored a, mentored a lot of kids. So that's a little bit about me. This is a history of Kusa Vigil and other metal fabs because we have some others they're included in the uh, the M, how we, how we designate them, M1 through right now, M13. And I'm sure you, if you looked at the email, y'all saw the pictures. This is the 13 metal flaps. And as you can see, M7, M9, and M10 are not uh, vigil flaps. But since they're metal, we did include them in the metal series. And, and I think... If it wasn't for Greg Sweatman, I don't, I, I couldn't have got all this in order. Greg was so helpful to me, and I'm, I'm glad that uh, he knows about all this numbering system. And uh, this is, we're going to go talk about each one of them. And uh, let's see, uh, I want to tell you about, uh, I didn't write, I'm just going to tell you about this. In night. 1999, when this all started with the merger of the councils, uh, they were searching for something that uh, would be unique to start out with. And uh, there was rumors that it was going to be some kind of pen. And then there was rumors it was going to be for vigils. And then it was rumors it was going to be for a flap. So nobody really knew what it was going to be. Luckily enough, I was I, one of my real, real close friends with Lodge Advisor, and he tried to keep me informed as much as he could as to what's going on, but I don't think uh, he really knew. But anyway, uh, everyone thought, what is it going to be? And they were a couple or three that really only knew, and one of them being James Flett, who was going to be the new Lodge Advisor for CUSA. And uh, so in the fall of 1999, at a, a fall fellowship, we all got together and, and James announced to some of us that there was going to be a medal, metal vigil flap to be sold at the 2000 fall initial CUSA fellowship. So that was how the rumor and how everything got started. And then after that, I just included this. This is a, luckily, uh, Eric Ross, I thank him for sending me this. This is each lodge chief 
the lodge advisor, the staff advisor, and when the M, the metal flat was issued and, and uh, how many, uh, how long it lasted and who, who did what. And uh, just nice to have this piece of history. It's pretty much accurate. I think as we got into the middle part, we, we sort of let it slip because we didn't keep quite as good of records as we should. The first five years have real good records and the last five years probably have real good records. Okay, this is how the metal flap became in existence. This is a letter from James Flat, who is the person who brought the idea of the metal flap for Lodge, Coosa Lodge. Uh, I know a lot of you know James. He is quite an individual, an excellent physician, and just an all around good person. Okay, the story, I'm gonna read this since this is not gonna be too terribly long. Story on the vigil metal flap dates back to 1980s. And I'm gonna read this if I'm James. I had designed several flaps for my home lodge, which is Pellissippi 230, during the 1970s and 80s. And when hat pin craze came around in 1985, I thought it would be nice to have an actual pocket flap like the that could be removed and replaced when washing in uniform. As a result, I designed a vigil flap for Pellissippi that was intended to be a metal flap the size of a pocket flap. But I shelved the idea and never actually took it to the lodge for consideration. Fast forward to 1999, when I became the first Coosa Lodge Advisor, during that first year, we were looking for new ideas that would generate interest in creating new traditions, something that would be different. That's when I resurrected the metal flap idea. I pulled out my old design for Pellissippi and redesigned it for Coosa, thinking that it would be a nice drawing card to stimulate interest in supporting vigil induction process each year. The LEC approved it and we ordered 200 of them in our initial order. 200 turned out to be the better price break uh, point. As you recall, those were the first issues of the 2000 Fall Fellowship, or were issued at the first, at the 2000 Fall Fellowship, one per vigil if they attended the vigil ceremony, and the new vigils could also purchase one. You'll recall we had quite a turnout, which continued for several years. The first order of 200 lasted two fellowships. Then we had to order a new batch and changed it slightly by changing the floor to Lee color. Just to keep the interest up, which worked, those that lasted two fellowships. Then we approached the lodge fifth anniversary. So we ordered a fifth anniversary vigil paddle flap, which was used for that fifth anniversary fellowship and the following fellowship. Beyond that, Greg Moore took over as lodge advisor, and I don't know the order of history from there on. Uh, James was lodge advisor for five years, and Greg Moore was lodge advisor for five years. So those two guys had a lot of influence uh, on our lodge. Some would say that this is not the first metal flap ever done, and that would be true to a certain extent. And I don't know how to say Lodge 308's name, so I'm not going to butcher it. From Indiana, had a metal flap in the 1960s, but it was different construction. It was aluminum flap shaped metal piece with a flap shaped decal on it and a safety pin glued to the back. Much crude construction likely made by the lodge members, not for a production order like ours were. Ours were ordered just like you'd order a hat pin only upsized to fit the pocket flap and had five push pins on the back to attach to the pocket flap. I can recall the question I got when I first corresponded with the pin manufacturer. You want hat pin high big? As you know, our vigil flap has been not just a hit in the lodge, but several other lodges copied that idea. Uh, 104, 565, 58, 481, just to name a few. Uh, the reason it, I think it was such a hit, you had to attend the vigil ceremony that morning at 
believe it was at six o'clock most of the time. And so you had to show up and, and be there. And then after you went, watched the ceremony and, con and congratulated the new vigils, then you could go to the trading post and buy your vigil, metal vigil flap. And uh, Eric Ross did an excellent job of keeping up with who attended the ceremonies. He, 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 I, well, he wrote down everybody's name and they would come in we would check them off a list or either he gave them a ticket where they could, could pick up their uh, metal flap. This metal flap was issued at the, they hadn't been the first, at the 2000 Fall Fellowship at Camp Jackson. There were 200 made, I think over, over one and a half were distributed at this function. The M1 issued for 2000 and 2001. We had several vigils go through that uh, that particular ceremony. I don't remember exactly, but I think it was 20 something. The M2 was issued in 2002. The only difference between the M1 and the M2 was the color of the fleur de lis from white to yellow. There were 200 made, they lasted for three years. Uh, little side note, the first metal flap we sold was $25. The last metal flap we sold in 2022 was $25. So I don't know if our cost has gone up, but thank goodness they haven't raised the cost of the members so far. The M3 was first used at the 2004 Fall Fellowship. It was celebrated the fifth anniversary of Lodge. There were 200 made. It was used for a few years, it sort of got mixed in with what was left over from the M2. And then when the M4 was issued, we sort of uh, kept them. And you could, if you wanted to, when you, you went to the vigil ceremony, you'd come back to the trade post. You could put, if we had extras, I mean, different ones, you could pick the one you would like to buy. You did not have to stick to buy the one that was being uh, issued for that year, if you missed the year before. I want to go back to this and uh, because these lodge, these lodge uh, chiefs, if you'll notice 2007, we had James Tarbox as our, uh, was elected for the second time as our lodge chief. And uh, because he got elected section chief, he will, he, his brother, a twin brother, by the way, was nominated and and became lodge chief. And then in 2008, we had Gregory Key elected as lodge chief. He joined in the military and had to leave early. So we had a new lodge chief, so Ryan Sweeney. So I just wanted to show, tell you why I like this sheet right here. It keeps up with what happened to our lodge chiefs as well as our, our flaps. Uh, as you can see, I, I think most of mine are still in the plastic. I didn't take them out. Uh, and the, the fifth anniversary did have a sticker on it that said that came on the plastic. The M4 was issued at the 2007 Fall Fellowship. I hope that this resembles the M1 and the M2. The only change, the Florida Lee to red. They were 200 made and was used at least three years. The M5 medal was issued around 2008. This is where, uh, back up a minute, this is where we didn't honestly keep as good a records as we probably should have. So it, it, the, the next few we got, we're sort of, I'm sort of not positive about the dates, but pretty sure I'm close. The main change was to the border. It was changed to a red from a yellow. There were 200 made. It was used for several years. It was used with the M4. The flaps are lasting longer because fewer people are attending the vigil ceremonies. Of course, like anything else, uh, the new wore off uh, and there were some, some concerns about some people that had disabilities getting to where we had our vigil ceremony. And we had sort of had to step back and take a look at the qualifications for to, to receive a to be able to purchase a metal flap uh so 
right in here, they begin to to look at if if a like we had a kid that had a this a breathing problem, and he just wasn't able to walk that far. So some things happened that caused us to to change that. And also our kitchen staff that were vigils because they were making vigil breakfast that morning and couldn't go to the vigil. We were, they were always allowed to buy a metal flap. The M6 has another big change to the border. It is dark green. It was issued around 2009 and it lasted at least three years and they were 200 made. I say 200, there's 200 made every time of each one of them. This is not a visual flap, but, but like I said before, but included because it is metal. It was created for Coosa Lodge and it was used in a, as a 2012 NOAC delegate flap. This M7, uh, I said a minute ago, I was wrong. There were two, there were 200 of each vigil flaps ordered every time. There was only a quantity of 112 of this one ordered. Uh, this is not terribly hard to find, but but it is one of our our tougher metal pieces. Uh, I think you could probably, if you looked hard enough, you could almost put a vigil, a Kusa vigil metal flap collection. I've seen them for sale here and there for trade, uh, but I've never seen this one for sale. The M8 is changed from a green border to a blue border with a yellow Florida leaf. It was issued around 2012. And of course there were 200 made and it was used for several years. It got to a point where they changed these borders from blue to black to green and they were hard. If you didn't keep up with it, you could almost get them mixed up. As previously stated, these two flaps were issued as an anniversary flap for the order of the era. I think there were a hundred of each one of these issued. These are not vigil flaps, but are included in our numbering system. And uh, of course, they're to celebrate. Uh, Greg told me when we when he was helping me number these, that it didn't really matter whether the white was the M9 or the black was the M9. So just chose as black. So I, I guess if somebody had theirs reversed, that would be perfectly okay. Uh, and also at that time, we did have a vigil flap to honor the 100th anniversary, the M11. It was issued in 2019 and our own uh, youth named Nathaniel Keaton designed the 100th anniversary logo and was, uh, I believe, honored at NOAC with, a, with several different items and got his, his trip to NOAC that year paid for. And that, uh, of course, appeared on anything what 2015 that uh, celebrating the anniversary. It, there were 200 made. It lasted about three years. The M2, the M215 and the white 215 black were issued at the same time that this was. So you could spend some money real quick in the trading post. The M12 was first issued around 2019. There were 200 made. It resembles the M8, but the border was changed to black. It was used for three to four years and mixed with the previous issue of flaps. Like I said, there one time, I believe, that when Greg Greg Sweatman runs our trading post now, uh, Greg had them in a, in a frame. And I believe at one time there were five different ones in the frame that you could choose from if you had missed uh, coming to the ceremony. We still have a real good turnout at vigil ceremonies, but goodness, the first five or six, when we started Coosa Lodge, we had, I don't know, Eric or may have to help me, around 70, 60 to 70 vigils turn out or more. And uh, they, I, I, I tease James Flat. he lives in Huntsville, Alabama, and Comer is, probably a 120 mile drive for him, but he'd get up early in the morning and come on Saturday morning so he wouldn't miss getting his metal flap. And now is the M13, issued at the 2022 Fall Fellowship. There were 200 made and it resembles the M6 and the M7. The main change is the black border. And so we know that, that uh, 
that uh, record is completely correct. And like I said, the 2012 NOAC, this was a salesman sample, I understand, or a prototype, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I guess when they were deciding to make it, uh, they didn't know whether they wanted gold or silver or whether the company was trying to sell them both or one way. But I uh, had a conversation with uh, some of you may know Larry Faulkner, and he uh, told me that uh, about this. And he he wasn't sure, but he thought there were four or five of these made. We uh, talking to Greg. I don't think we include this. Just it's in here just for information only. This presentation may contain some inaccuracies. I would like to thank Dr. Flat, Eric Ross, James Tarbot. Chris Arnold, Greg Swetman, Larry Faulkner, Greg Moore for their input. This is the first tradition that Coosa Lodge started and should last for many years. Over the years, there have been changes to the rules for obtaining a vigil flap. Many thanks to Eric Ross and keeping up with attendance at vigil ceremonies. And that's it. Somebody had asked about, do people actually wear them? I have seen them wear them. I tried, it's too heavy. <laughs> It'll tear your shirt too. A lot of our guys are wearing only uh, red wool jackets too. Yeah, I'm just thankful that James Flat remembered all that because <laughs> I just sent him a request. I said, "How'd we start start doing visual flaps a while back?" I got interested in this, and I knew he should know. And sure enough, did I may have heard part of the story before, but I had never heard the complete story. 